just outside of the tiny village of Amesville, which the children of pioneers who'd crossed the Ohio River from Virginia had settled in spite of its poor drainage, with its detached summer kitchen, its limestone foundation, its faded grandeur, and its setting on the creek, connected to the road by a bridge of tied logs. Not news we might have read back in the 1860s about the rippled region across that great river seceding from the secessionists and becoming West Virginia on the grounds that they had poor agriculture, no aristocracy to speak of, and nothing to gain from slavery. But news from the turbulent late 1960s and the early 1970s that now were fresh history. And for Donnie in the cabin at the head of the holler, determined like Jim to go to law school to defend us against the wily capitalists who've since taken over. But for a flatlander like me from a white bread suburb, son of sheet metal fabricator and pink collar worker, it was a rare thrill to live out there on the rustic back roads of rural Amesville, especially in that improvised shack on the side of even the most utterly insignificant hill. That place put me closer than ever to the weather. Sometimes, climbing to the ridgetop, following the creek beyond Donnie's cabin, which he, Phil, and classmates in a Foxfire program had moved to the holler, or throwing sticks for my dog between the barn and the house, I wondered whether, like certain iconic figures of Eastern religious legend, I could dissolve myself in nature and immerse my consciousness so selflessly in the imagery that, for all intents and purposes, my identity would disappear, or at least the reprehensible aspects of my character. Not the poems lamenting an unrequited infatuation, comparing greater Columbus to a gigantic ant colony, and worrying about the environmental implications of my black VW bug, but those I recorded in my journal. And when the creek rose so high with cold spring rain that it flooded the shallow valley, washing out our bridge, scattering its skinned logs, stranding cars, tractors, and trucks, and clogging for a week the village's one commercial block with brush and dead dogs.